Ken the Peace, Fox News contributor Joe Concha, and from First Baptist Church in Dallas, Fox News contributor Pastor Robert Jeffress. Welcome back to you both. We had you here Friday to make your predictions. So let's talk about the speech that you saw. Um, Joe, you went on to write, it's hard to imagine given the poll numbers, Trump not backing in, uh, jumping back into the ring in 2024. Many of the GOP probably secretly wish he'd simply play the role of kingmaker for an heir apparent like DeSantis and his chief fundraiser. But what do you think the odds are he does that, Joe? Well, you know, after seeing this one straw poll, Shannon, which showed that 55% of CPAC attendees would vote for President Trump in a, or former President Trump, in a uh, nomination process in the primary, I thought, wow, 55% is a bit low, considering that probably if you ask that question before the 2020 election, they're probably more like 90%, 92%. So it makes me wonder that while people like the Trump message and they like his position on many, many policies, perhaps they see him as maybe not the messenger anymore. Now, granted, it's still a majority, but maybe Iran DeSantis is the guy who could take the baton and take that message home as far as all the things that he stands for in terms of immigration, in terms of deregulation, in terms of all the things that made him win in 2016. So that one straw poll really st uh, stuck out at me. It said, wow, 55 percent. I, I figured that would be a lot, lot bigger. But overall, it was, a, it was a very good speech. He was very disciplined in terms of not relitigating, like we talked about on Friday, Shannon, the 2020 election in terms of whining oh. about that for too long, because then you sound like Hillary Clinton, right? Where you say, oh, well, you know, you, you well, complain about all the reasons why you lost. So I, I thought that he did a good job in that regard, Shannon. Uh, Pastor, I wonder if you agree, because he did spend a lot of time uh, talking, not, not a huge amount of time, but very pointed statements about the fact that he actually won the last election. There were people who wondered, will he finally concede and say, okay, Joe Biden is the president now? Um, but he did talk about the fact that if he gets back into the race, he would win for a third time. Um, do you think that he spent too much time with the right amount of time or, or not, not the right amount of time, Pastor, on that? Look, I think in the end, nobody's going to really care about what happened on November 3rd, 2020, or what happened on January 6, 2021. As we get deeper into the Biden administration, all Republicans are going to care about is winning. And there were some good speeches at CPAC, but nobody had the firepower of Donald J. Trump. And you know, CPAC straw polls, they're interesting, but they're not predictive or reflective of Republican sentiment. If they were, we'd have a President Mitt Romney, a President President Rand Paul or President Rudy Giuliani, all of whom won the uh, CPAC straw polls. I think really, again, uh, any softness, and I think Joe's right, there's a little bit of softness there. I think it's temporary. It's traceable to January the 6th. But I have a friend uh, who supported the president in 2016, 2020. He was turned off by what happened in January 6th and would have voted to impeach if he had had the ability to. But he said to me this week, he said, you know, Robert, uh, the further we get away from January 6th and the further we get into the Biden administration, I think I'd vote for Trump again. And I think more and more people are going to say that as we get closer to 2024. Joe, I want to ask you about a piece this weekend by Maureen Dowd in the New York Times where she wrote about the fact that people are high on their own supply and that Democrats are trying to work the rough. She talks about the media. She says it was so enthralling and gratifying to assail Donald Trump as a liar and misogynist that it was bound to be jarring when liberals had to learn the lesson that reporters don't or shouldn't suit up for the blue team. This whole piece was about how they're getting mad at reporters for, quote, doing their jobs now as journalists if they question someone in the Biden administration or elsewhere because they've gotten so used to reporters being, quote, on their side, meaning with the left. I wonder if you had a chance to see the piece or what you think of uh, that assessment. Oh, I thought it was an excellent piece, and I will confess that in reading Maureen Dowd uh, since I was a teenager, basically, that I've modeled my writing style after hers, uh, primarily just because I, I love the fact that she be she comes across as so authentic, and there is a little snark and sarcasm in everything that she writes. I don't agree with a lot of her positions, but her writing is excellent, and she gets it completely right in terms of what journalism's uh, journalism in terms of the way some folks act in this business, in terms of rooting for a side, and and that's what we're seeing here at this point. We're seeing journalism, the isms shift to activism at this point in terms of rooting for the blue team. And now if you actually report on 
Joe Biden in any way in terms of scrutiny that these people get eviscerated on Twitter and that that's not the way it should be. Always speak truth to power regardless of who is in office, regardless of party. And uh, some journalists are doing that, not all, unfortunately, Shannon. It was a very thought-provoking piece. Uh, Joe, Pastor, great to have you both back for a recap. We'll see you again soon. Great to see you. Thank you, Shannon.